So for probably the past maybe three or four years now, I have been editing each and every one of my landscape photos on either the 27 inch iMac behind me or a 15 inch MacBook Pro along with this. This is a uh, Wacom tablet. This is the uh, Intuos Pro Medium Edition. And until recently, a few months ago, I had purchased a 12.9 inch iPad Pro along with the Apple Pencil 2. And ever since this purchase, the number of images that I have been editing on the aforementioned two machines has been in a, I guess a slow and steady decline. Now it's not because the iPad is just a superior piece of technology for photo editing, but I can attest to the fact that it is substantially more fun to use. And in this video, I wanna share with you the, the experiences that I had using the iPad Pro for editing my photos over the past four months. What I like about it, what I don't like about it, and how it compares to a Wacom tablet just for photo editing. So, and I don't really think that comparing these two devices is really fair. I think that um, it's not really an apples to apples comparison. It's more in line with like an apples to an orange comparison. They're both very similar devices. They're both very different devices and they both cater to uh, really completely different audiences as well. Now, if you're not familiar with what a Wacom tablet is, it's basically a creative, I guess, a pen tablet that enables you to hook this up to your computer via USB or uh, Bluetooth. And it enables you to use a stylus in lieu of a mouse or a trackpad to navigate your computer or to edit your photos with. Now, the overall form factor of a Wacom tablet is there's not a whole lot to it. It's uh, very straightforward. It's very thin. There's not a whole lot of weight to it. And uh, it's just very simple. It's just, just a very thin tablet. Now, one of the things that I like so much about this Wacom tablet is the amount of customization that um, it affords you. There's eight buttons along the left side of the screen and you can assign a shortcut key or a hot key that's very important to your post-processing workflow. So things that you use constantly while you're editing your photos, you can assign that function to one of these shortcut keys. And then after you do that and you you know you start using it for a little while, you can almost use it without even having to look at it. You know exactly where the buttons are for whatever particular shortcut or hotkey you're trying to uh, activate. So being able to assign a dedicated button to certain activities is, is a very powerful thing and it really makes editing your, your photos feel much more natural and it's definitely much more efficient. And there's even this little track wheel right here that, it, it, that creates even additional flexibility from a customization standpoint. You can assign this kind of roller wheel to various different uh, jobs or different functions as well. And then as the actual, as far as the stylus goes, this thing is absolutely fantastic as well. And it takes customization to, you know, a different level or an additional level as well. There's this little kind of rocker switch on the front right here, which you can assign two more uh, shortcut or hotcut keys to. So things that you use most often, you might want to assign to one, either the, the bottom rocker key or the top rocker key. That way it's always in your hand and you can quickly access that. The actual uh, pen tip or stylus tip, I should say, is great. It's got the, the tilt sensitivity. It's got pressure sensitivity, something crazy too. I, I read somewhere that it's like, eight or 9,000 points of pressure that it can, it can detect, which is absolutely incredible, but uh, it works very good. It's got a, uh, a eraser on the top. So if you're dodging and burning something or you're painting on some kind of an effect and maybe you've gone a little bit too far, you can just flip it around and just erase it just like a normal pencil would. And it's just a very intuitive and natural and I guess organic feel to it. We've been using pencils ever since we were in grade school. So this is a very natural progression. And uh, I really do enjoy using this, uh, the Wacom stylus. And I don't know what kind of wizardry that uh, Wacom has put into this thing, but there is no batteries in it. You don't have to charge it. I don't really know how it works because there is technology built into it. There are switches in it, but for some crazy reason, there is no need to ever charge this thing. So I think that is really cool. I'm not sure how they do that. But um, the overall process of using the Wacom is, uh, is fairly straightforward. It feels great to actually use it. It really does resemble um, if you were to take a number two pencil and just kind of draw on a piece of paper, it feels like that. The stylus or the actual tablet itself creates just a tiny bit of friction and it just has a very, uh, a very natural and um, recognizable feel to it. And I really do enjoy using it. Now using these, it takes a little bit of practice. There's definitely a learning curve associated with it. It is not like dragging a cursor all over a screen with the mouse. This is definitely a little bit different. You don't necessarily drag your cursor all over the screen 
you basically place it in certain areas. And on the actual tablet itself, there's these little markers that indicate uh, the different corners of your screen. So for instance, if you want to drag your cursor or place your cursor on the top left-hand corner of your screen, you just place it there and it shows up on your screen. And then if you wanna place it in the bottom right-hand corner, I guess you really could drag it over there, but that's not really what it's designed for. You would just pick it up and place it in the bottom right-hand corner and your cursor would show up in that corresponding corner on your screen. So there is definitely a learning curve associated with it, but once you play around with it a little bit, it becomes a, a very intuitive process and uh, it becomes very natural and definitely, definitely streamlines your overall uh, post-processing workflow. Now, as far as the iPad Pro goes, it is quite a bit different than the actual Wacom tablet. There's no need to hook this up to a computer to operate because it is a computer in itself. This is much more in line with uh, you know, your laptop with, that happens to have a touch screen. And for purposes of this video, I'm going to be discussing Lightroom as the mobile editing app. There's a ton of great mobile editing apps for the iPad, but Lightroom is the one that I've been using exclusively since I've um, purchased this. So in it, like it's, pretty much identical to a computer as far as just like importing photos go. So I purchased this. This is the Apple SD card to USB-C dongle. There's a ton of different options out there. You definitely don't have to get this one. It's kind of expensive, but it works good. It's pretty quick as well. And if you want to import photos, you simply just plug it into the bottom of the actual iPad, take your SD card, plug it into the SD card reader, and then come down here to the files app click on locations right here and you can see where it says untitled right there and that is the actual sd card and this is all the photos that i have on the sd card you can either hit select up here and then hit select all and that'll automatically select all of them you can hit deselect all if you just want to pick specific uh, photos that you happen to to want to import you can do that and then just come up here to or down here i'm sorry to share and then come to uh, lightroom and in this process right here, it takes um, a few seconds. Of course, it depends on the obvious things like how many photos you're importing, how large are those photos. Most of these images, I think, were shot on my Sony a7R II, so they are larger files. I think each one represents around 80 or 85 megabytes a piece. So it takes a couple seconds, but not too terribly long. And then once it's completed, you'll get a little dialog box. It says Lightroom 8 shared photos uh, and hit launch Lightroom now. And it'll automatically pull everything up and it's gonna show up right up here in the very top and you can just click on them and you can just kind of start to thumb through them just like this and the overall process of just looking through the photos is is absolutely fantastic the the the, the screen on the uh the ipad itself is absolutely incredible it's probably one of the best screens i have ever worked with even better than the 5k imac behind me i absolutely love just uh, looking at this uh, the screen on the ipad and then if you as far as the actual editing goes there is, um, it's got a very streamlined interface. It looks a lot like Lightroom on the, uh, the or I should say the desktop version of Lightroom. So if we come over here, you can click on light right there. And if we wanna bring down the exposure of this image, we do just that. And I'm just looking at the histogram in the top left-hand corner of the, uh, of the screen here to determine exactly how much uh, or what level of exposure reduction I wanna apply. Maybe not quite that much, maybe somewhere right around there. Definitely want to add some contrast, kind of really fill out the, the histogram there. Bring the highlights down a little bit. Maybe bring the shadows. What do we want to do with the shadows? I think we want to actually bring them down a touch. And then the whites. Uh, bring the whites down just a little bit there. And then the blacks. I think I'm going to bring the blacks down just a, t eh, maybe not quite that much, maybe to about right there. And then you have your color section right here, and then you have your white balance. So if you want to do auto white balance, we can select that. Or if we want to do, you know, cloudy, we can do that. It even has the, uh, the, the white balance selector. So you can kind of just drag this around a neutral area and it'll automatically adjust the white balance to that area. So I think that uh, auto did a pretty good job on this one. Maybe warm it up just a touch. And then you have your standard, you know, vibrance and saturation sliders, kind of maybe boost the vibrance a little bit. Maybe bring the saturation down a touch, which is kind of my standard workflow. Then you have your effects section. If we want to add a little bit of texture, we can do that here and add a little bit of clarity. I'm going to actually put a little bit of negative clarity in there just to kind of soften it a little bit. 
Got your dehaze slider, which I'm gonna do something a little bit different with that in a second. And then your vignette, let's add a subtle vignette. Maybe feather that vignette a little bit. It's about right there. And then you also have split toning, so you can tone the highlights a certain way, you can tone the shadows a certain way, which is a fantastic addition. I think when the first uh, few iterations of the iPad mobile editing app came out, they didn't have split toning, I believe. But now it does, and it works fantastic. And I'm not gonna use it on, well, we'll use it for demonstration purposes. We can add a little bit of warmth to the actual highlights itself. So maybe something about color about right there. That looks fine. Then you have your detail section. If we want to add a little bit of sharpening, we can do that right there. You can mask the sharpening some, add a little bit of noise reduction if we like to. And you have your optic section right here. You can remove chromatic aberrations. You have your geometry section to kind of fix uh, distortion, which I'm not gonna do that on this particular image. But as we go through this editing process, you can really feel that it's very, very similar to the the desktop version of Lightroom. So if you're a Lightroom user, this should be this should feel very natural to you as well. Then you have uh, this selection up here, which is going to just basically hide a lot of those tools. You can select this, and this is going to pull up a lot of those kind of Adobe uh, presets that uh, Lightroom comes with. That's that selection, and then you have your crop tool. Let's put a maybe a four by five crop on this one right here. I'm going to bring it up there to the top. I'm gonna try and straighten this image out a little bit. Maybe something about right there looks good. Let me bring this out just a touch and then just gonna hit done right there. And then you have your standard kind of clone and heel brushes right here. And then I think this is fantastic, which is the actual selective edits. So this is where you can access your, your graduated filters or your, your radial filters or your adjustment brushes. So once you select that, come up here to the plus tool or plus button and hit this right here. This is going to be your graduated filter. I'm just going to drag it down across the top right here. And then I want to come over here to effects because I want to do something with dehaze. So we can either take a lot of the haze out of that back area or we can actually add a little bit more into it. I'm going to add a little bit more just to kind of exaggerate that. I just kind of like the atmosphere that that provides. Something like maybe right there looks good. I think that looks nice. And then as far as like the, the, the radial tool goes, we could come up here and hit plus there, hit the actual radial, draw a big radius, maybe right over this area right here. If we want to angle it a little bit, we could. Maybe reduce the size of it. And let's say that we want to hmm, go to effects. Let's say we want to add a lot of texture to it. So if we you can actually see that area, what that texture is doing to it. So if we want to kind of just make it pop a little bit, we could and kind of do the same thing with clarity. I'm not going to do anything with that though. I'm going to bring the texture up a little bit, just kind of grab the viewer's attention right there in the beginning. And then as far as the actual adjustment brush goes, I think this is amazing. Click the adjustment brush. You have this right here, which is going to be your overall size of the actual brush. It's going to bring it down to small. This right here is the actual feather. You can see it changing at the top of the screen. And then this is the actual flow of it. So I'm going to bring that up kind of high. And just so you can easily see what we're doing, let's bring the exposure up all the way. And if we just lightly start to kind of paint this effect over a certain area, you can see that it's starting to, whoops, I grabbed the circular, the radial tool, or radial adjustment we already applied. If I just start to kind of paint it, you can see what it's doing. And if I press really hard, you can see what it's doing is it's putting more of that effect down. But if I just wanna just kind of lightly brush in a little bit of this area, you can, and it's all just based off of how much pressure you're actually applying to it. And of course I would never do that, but just to make it a little bit easier to see, we'll just hit cancel there. So the actual pressure sensitivity of the actual Apple Pencil is really fantastic. I think it works great. I think that um, it's not nearly as customizable as the Wacom tablet uh, stylus is. There is, uh, it's got this kind of double tap feature where you can set the double tap to different things. So I can set it to where if I double tap, it'll enable the eraser and then I could just paint on the eraser effect. I wish it did have an eraser on top so you could kind of flip it around and erase it. I think that's much more of a natural feel. Plus it would free up an additional area for customization on here. But you can set the double tap to pull up a color, I think a color uh, palette. I think you can also set it to utilize the, the most recent tool as well, but that's really it right now. I'm hoping that with the firmware update, maybe there'll be some additional things you can, uh, additional customization you can apply to it. But as of right now, that's really all you can use. 
you do have to charge the Apple Pencil, but what's really cool is it just kind of snaps it. That was perfect. <laughs> it just kind of snaps right into the iPad itself. It's always there. I always keep it connected to my, uh, my actual iPad. You don't have to look for a charger or plug a cord into it. I just keep it right on the side. So it's literally always charged that way. So I think that is really neat. And by the way, you don't have to keep this connected. I just forgot to, to disconnect it. But, um, and then once you're done with your actual photograph, you can actually export it however you like. And there's multiple different ways you can export a photograph. Uh, TIFF files, original files, JPEGs. Uh, it's exactly like the, uh, the actual desktop version as far as uh, the export settings go. So editing a image on the iPad is a ton of fun. It is a lot different than the actual Wacom tablet though. So, you know, who, who are these for? And, you know, it, it, it really depends on kind of the problem that you're trying to solve. Are you looking for a dedicated, more customizable uh, photo editing tool and that's all you're looking for? Then maybe you wanna go with something that's kind of like a Wacom tablet. Or if you're looking for something that's a little bit more portable and you're wanting to use it for a little bit more than just photo editing, maybe the, the iPad is the way to go. But if you remove the obvious difference between these two devices, which is the fact that, you know, this is kind of a, a full-blown computer, and this is a tablet, if you remove those from the equation, the fact that this needs the, the, a computer to, to hook up to, to operate, and this actually does not, that's a big difference. And the fact that when you're using this, you're using the trackpad and you are actually looking at a screen. So that's a big difference. And as far as the actual iPad goes, you are you ty not typing, but you're, you are staring at the screen itself. So sorry, I got the text messages going off on my iPad, but you're not actually looking at a secondary monitor. You're looking at the actual screen itself. So that's a really big difference. So is one better than the other? Absolutely, but it really just depends on exactly, you know, what you're, you're looking to accomplish with it. Are you looking for just that dedicated photo editing tool? Then this might be the way to go. I think this one right now can be purchased for around $300. If you're looking for more of a computer, you know, I purchased the iPad because I really like the fact that I could actually edit on the screen that I'm actually looking at. And it was very portable. I wanted to use it for answering email. I wanted for typing up documents. I wanted to, to watch Netflix. Um, and of course, editing photos as well. So it really just depends on exactly what you're looking to do with it. This right here, I bought the 12.9 inch, 256 gigabyte, Wi-Fi and cellular enabled, and it was almost $1,300, which is crazy expensive. And it's almost, or actually I think it's over, yeah, over four times the price of the Wacom tablet, but you're getting a lot more. So I think it really comes down to a course price, what you're obviously looking to do for it, but are you, or I shouldn't say are you, but do you need to have the ability to use the desktop version of your favorite photo editing apps? Do you need the desktop version of Lightroom? Do you need the desktop version of Photoshop? If so, you might want to get a Wacom tablet for that. If you're fine using the mobile version of Lightroom, definitely look at the iPad. I think that Lightroom's mobile editing app is absolutely fantastic. It is substantially better than Photoshop's. I think Photoshop's right now is practically unusable. I never use it at all. I think it will get better over time. It's pretty new. So, um, but I think Lightroom has done a very good job with theirs. So if you happen to be in the market for some type of new computer or iPad or a tablet device, I hope you're able to get some interesting information out of this week's video that you could possibly apply to your uh, next purchasing decision. And as always, if you, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I'll see you next week.